Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live special coverage of the Brocade Tech Day. It's the industry analysts, the financial analysts, and a bunch of uh, influencers in the networking space brought together to talk about some of the new innovations that Brocade's brought to market, as well as really you know, talking about debating and sharing what's going on in the, in the IT space, specifically on the networking side. Um, and joining me for this segment is Ken Chang. Ken, first time on theCUBE, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you Stu, and thank you for having me. Great, and so, so Ken is the uh, VP of Service Provider Products at Brocade, and uh, service providers is really one of, the, one of the big focuses that we're hearing at the show here. Um, in the presentations yes. this morning, uh, when you look at the segments of Ethernet, it seems that Service Providers has some of the growth, and also where some of the, you know, kind of, early adopters on innovation, innovative solutions and those willing to kind of go beyond some of the old stuff are, are driving it. So uh, we had companies like Pete Colo on this morning, it was a service provider of service That's providers, right. and our segment after this, we're going to have Internet 2, uh, who I know you worked real close with. So, uh, you know, Ken, last year when we came here, you, you started talking about open flow for service providers, and to be honest, some of us were scratching our heads and we're like, open flow, <laughs> I understand it, the academic world and the enterprise, but service providers, I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Kind of fast forward to today and, you know, it, it, it's a big part of the discussion. So, you know, can you take us back to kind sure. of Brocade's you know, open flow and SDN work right. and, you know, especially the journey on the service provider side. Sure, thank you, Stu. Um, so we actually announced our support uh, publicly uh, for open flow and SDN back in Tech Day, in fact, uh, of 2010. So that was exactly two years ago. And um, two years Actually, later. Actually, like two and a half years ago now, exactly, right? Exactly, two and a half May, years ago. So, so um, two years later, I think now SDN is poised to fundamentally change networking in a profound way. And uh, we are absolutely leading the charge and um, we see a lot of service providers actually intrigued by the technology and they are truly trying to kind of understand what this technology can do for them. Because um, I think SDN fundamentally uh, bring three benefits. Number one, um, network virtualization. And number two, programmatic control of infrastructure. And number three, ease uh, cloud orchestration. So, all three of these uh, topics are uh, very dear to service providers' hearts. Uh, it's, it's important um, topics for them. So many of them are trying to understand what the technology can do for them, what benefits they can get from it, and how they can get started. Yeah, Ken, I wonder if you could peel the onion for us a little bit, because sure. when I think of the networking space, um, you know, Arista is known for some of their kind of prog pro programmable right. environments. Uh, Juniper also, uh, you know, have some things they can do there. Um, you know, you think of Brocade and it has really, you know, built your brand on the enterprise and the data center. So, you know, what 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 does Brocade have that brings uh, them into this discussion of specifically the programmability programmability in the service provider market? Yeah, I think. I think two uh, answers to you. One is that a uh, service provider uh, really believes in, in that at least the early day of, of SDN is all about applying SDN open flow to specific applications. They want to um, build applications around SDN without ripping out their existing investment. Right, so that is why Bouquet developed the open flow hybrid mode uh, solution so that service provider can build virtual networks on top of their existing production network, uh, effectively slide off a, a portion of the network to enable these new uh, services without completely re-architecting their uh, infrastructure. So uh, the second uh, answer is that they want to work with Brocade because we are completely committed 
to, um, to, to support SDN in the standard way. Through the open flow standard, we implemented 1.0 today, we're going to implement, uh, implement 1.3, so we are staying on track um, uh, along the standards. So investment uh, of service providers can be completely protected. Okay, uh, interesting because you, you know hybrid mode you know sounds interesting to me from the enterprise space because I've got all of that existing inve investment. A couple of the service providers that you've worked with, I have talked about. We went from one gig, we wanted to go to ten gig. You know, we almost started from a clean slate. So, is the hybrid mode something that you're seeing deployed for the service providers, and and how do they go from that kind of the three tier? Is it the three tier architecture, or is there something different that you're talking about from a hybrid mode? Yeah, I think that the, the hybrid mode uh, you can deploy it inside a data center or you can deploy it uh, in the wide area network. And for many of the service providers, that's actually very interesting. Um, it can effectively create, uh, and allow them to create new services over the wide area network um, for their customers. Right? They can specifically redirect certain flows uh, along a different path. They can uh, redirect flows to avoid a, con a congesting congested portion of the network. They can re redirect long-lived flows uh, away from where there are business critical um, uh, applications. So there are many interesting applications that is applicable on the wide area network. Okay, uh, so uh, you announced some new updates with uh, kind of your super core routing and the MLXE platform. Yes. Can you, uh, you know, kind of share with us what, what's the announcement and kind of what, what are the big trends that kind of led to some of these enhancements that you've brought? Yeah, I think there are a lot of changes happening in the core networks. Um, the growing traffic volume, uh, increased speed of the network, um, uh, the fragmentation of addresses, the migration to IPv6. Uh, so all of these are increasing the, the complexity of operations for the core networks and also driving the cost up. So what service providers are looking for really is simplify operations and reducing the cost per bit for traffic traversing through the core. So we have announced our super core uh, routing solution uh, by today introducing a purpose-built high-density 10 gig interface module and also a, a reduced feature set um, uh, LSR router um, to specifically bring massive scalability um, to core networks and at the same time reduce the cost of the, both the CapEx and the OpEx okay. in the core. So over the last year, overlay networks has become you know, kind of a really hot discussion in the networking space with you know, VXLAN and NVGRE. Yes. Um, and it, it seems like that has a real promise to help with things like the migration to IPv6. And we can keep some IPv4 in there. Uh, as, as well as, if you talk about scalability, I can either just try to build something with you know, a million you know, VMs or I, I can create pods and I can isolate things. Yes. Uh, how do you see the discussion going with, uh, with overlays versus you know, yes. just kind of massive scalable environments? Sure, um, let me just first say that um, the way to handle the IPv6 migration um, really has to be a dual stack solution. So that you handle IPv6 natively, um, you, you route IPv6 traffic natively in the network. I think overlay network is great in building uh, virtualized networks. It en en enables this creation of virtual networks and communities um, on top of your production network. Um, however, it is going to have a certain um, cost because you are encapsulating effectively traffic in an additional header uh, inside the tunnel. Okay, so uh, we are running low on time, but there's, there's one really interesting uh, solution. There's many interesting things that Brocade yes. announced, but when you talk about massive amounts of data and scalable networks, you guys are actually looking to leverage the information on the network into a big data application itself. Absolutely. Uh, I believe it's called network analytics. Can you give us just kind of, kind of a brief description of you know, what you saw, how you came to this, and, and what network analytics is? Yeah, so this is probably a, one of the best set kept secret in that uh, Brocade actually have one of the industry's best analytics solutions uh, in the sense that 
we offer service providers and enterprise customers the ability to set filters with the MRX um, analytic enabled uh, router to uh, filter information and feed into the analytic applications. And these applications uh, can range from security applications, um, uh, um, uh, uh, visualization application, modeling app applications, and also allow these applications to dynamically change the filtering policy so that they can get the right data. And uh, we have many uh, service providers around the world has deployed our solutions, and the fact, the reason they like our solutions be is because it's highly scalable, it supports 10 gig, 100 gig networks, and it supports fine-grained um, uh, filtering uh, policies. So, so is this something that the network administrator uses, or do you need to be a data scientist to be able to play with uh, this This solution? is absolutely, that's something that um, uh, network administrator can use, uh, working together with the um, analytic application uh, uh, managers. Great, so you know, wh what do you see as uh, Ken kind of you know, wrapping up on this segment? Okay. Um, you know, wh what's, what's the biggest opportunity for the service providers? You know, what, what kind of applications are they going to be able to uh, really kind of give new business models for? Um, you always talk, you know, it's, it's one thing to have new speeds and feeds and technologies, but right. it's what can I do just totally differently? You, you know, wh what do you see as kind of the biggest opportunity in the service provider space that yes. I maybe couldn't do in the traditional enterprise? Yes, so um, I think we are always going to be stayed at the forefront in terms of speeds and feeds, um, in, in terms of high density 10 gig, 100 gig, but we are increasingly going to focus on um, data center networking and also uh, interconnecting data centers for cloud uh, optimized networks. So we see that is the biggest opportunity. We see that's where SDN will bring tremendous value. That's why we committed to SDN. That's why we are leading the implementation of all these SDN and open flow technology. Build that into our switches and router portfolio. Okay, well, Ken Chang, uh, Brocade Service Provider Group, at the forefront of one of the largest growth areas in Ethernet technology, driving innovation in SDN, in the service provider env environment. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, SiliconANGLE TV's live special coverage of the Brocade Tech Day. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>